So what is what is Haka first? Uh, so Haka is the implementation of the actor system on the JVM, mm -hmm. and the actor system was invented or the, uh, first created in, in back in the '70s by a, a gentleman named Carl Hewitt, uh, and the actor system became very uh, well known, I guess, in the telecommunications industries back in the '80s and '90s. I think with Erlang, they wanted to build systems that. Uh, didn't break, didn't stop. They could be upgraded while the system kept running because they were handling uh, you know, the phone exchange systems, things mm -hmm. like that. So for us, back around, I think it was around 2009, Jonas Benair became, he was f familiar with the actor system and he wanted to bring the actor system to the Java community, to the JVM. Mm -hmm. So back then is when he first made an implementation of that. Um, so an actor system is, it's fairly simple. It's, it's that there's a software actor, and the only way that you talk to actors is by sending them asynchronous messages. So it's okay. different than, say, doing things like with object-oriented programming where you're calling methods on a class. You know, mm -hmm. Here is you're, one piece of code is directly interacting with another piece of code. With actors, you're sending messages asynchronously, asynchronously to each other. So it, the analogy I like to use is like, almost like you and I are texting. You know, we, we, I text you a message, I can mm -hmm. continue to do things, on my, you know, waiting for you to respond. You may or may not respond to me, those types of things. Versus with software, if I, you know, invoke a method of you, right, I'm waiting for you to respond to me, things like that. So there's a, a very fundamental difference in, in the way things work, but it's also a very powerful way of doing things. So what, w I mean, in which cases would you use actually an ACA framework? So we're, what, one thing where it starts and it works really well is for concurrency. Mm -hmm. And really, it, it's, a, it's a nice uh, alternative to threading. Because with the possibility of, say, one actor calling, you know, sending messages to another actor, that's inherently multi-threaded in that, uh, I, say, I'm an actor, you're an actor, I'm running on one thread, you're running on another thread. We're only using threads when we need to actually run. When mm -hmm. we're not doing anything, those threads are used somewhere else. Uh, but I could send a message to multiple actors. Say I'm, a, uh, I'm delegating work out to a bunch of different actors. So I can fire I off see. messages to multiple actors at the same time. All those actors are running concurrently. And I'm not doing any, you know, me, the, the instigator of all this activity, I'm not doing uh, any really compl complicated thread programming and things like that. Um, I'm just basically sending messages and maybe I'm waiting for responses back, things like that. It, it, so okay. it's a very fundamentally different way of doing highly concurrent operations without getting all caught up into the, the intricacies of doing thread level programming. And so, and you can do this, of course, at scale, right? Yes. So that's... Yeah. Yeah. Big, big scale. In fact, um, it's, it's a little, uh, for most people that when they first come to Akka, they have a it's uh, almost overwhelming the things that you can do because you end up, when you finally settle in and you, you kind of understand how to use it, it's not unusual to have a system where there's tens of thousands or hundreds of thousands or even millions of actors, individual actors that are doing things. And another kind of um, learning process is that instead of having big actors that do a lot, have a lot of code in them, mm -hmm. you kind of decompose problems into collaborating groups of actors. So you have I very see. focused actors that are doing very focused things and, and in a very distributed way. So it, it, it is a different way of doing things. So, and what other tools do you, or do people, usually your customers, for example, use with Akka? So like, w what would be a complementary solution if you? Um, I don't think there is any. <laughs> <laughs> the, no. it, it, um, and uh, the other thing with well, they, they use it with uh, within their application, but they're probably using like a different cloud system or um, yeah. So uh, so how w what kind of setup do do your customers have like to start with? It's when one area. There's a, quite a few areas. One area with just fundamental actors and Akka is that Akka can run in a cluster. So the way I describe it is that you're not constrained to a single JVM anymore. You can mm -hmm. write a, a system that can be a collaborating, a very tightly collaborating group of JVMs running in a cluster distributed across the network. And then the programming for that is really straightforward. There's a very nice abstraction layer that you, you have to do things there. That's just fundamental actors you know, doing highly concurrent things and running in a distributed environment. 
but there's many other things that Aka provides. The next, probably the biggest thing is Aka Streams. Mm -hmm. So it's a whole new, uh, you know, stream processing, and it's very uh, functional. And you know, you know, you're doing things like map and flat map and and um, filtering and things like that. But it, it's the react, the whole reactive streams uh, implementation. You know, we've been doing that for a couple of years now, right from the very beginning when we when everybody started talking about reactive streams, we were heavily involved in that from the beginning, and that's a that's an entirely different way of doing um, programming, and you're really not de even dealing with actors at that point. You're, it, there's actors happening, or helping underneath the abstraction layer of streams, but it's just a, a different way of doing things, and these, these streams, and Aka streams can be non-trivial. They can be graphs that fan out, that fan back in. They can, uh, they can invoke other actors, they can do things asynchronously. It's, there's a very, very rich set of Capabilities that are part provided with with Aka Streams. So, uh, so how do people find out about uh, Aka, or can you, can they just download it? Oh yeah, Aka is open source, fully okay. open source. Um, it's been a bit, again, it's been around since about 2009. A lot of fair number of the Java community are familiar with it, especially and the Scala community certainly is familiar with it. I came across it in a Coursera class when I was my first introduction to Scala, and part of the class had Akka in it, and that's why I came across it. But it's open source, just akka.io is, is the website. We've been working very, very hard, the Akka team, on um, enriching the documentation, because again, there's, you know, it's a different paradigm for doing things. And it, it's not just a framework either, it's a, it's a pretty rich tool set. We, we, we refer to it as a tool set, because you know, we have Actors, we have Aka streams, but there's many mm -hmm. other things that come with Aka, so it's a it's a big ecosystem, but okay. all open source, and um, anybody can take it and use it. And it's also you can use it in Java, mm -hmm. which is surprising to, to some people because Lightbend is known as the Scala company or the company behind right. Scala. But uh, my own experience before I came to the comp to Lightbend was working at, at HP using Aka with Java. We're a big Java shop, so it's Java or Scala. You know, pick, take your pick. 